so this is exhibit one. This is um, three dodecahedrons, like one inside the other inside the other. Um, so it looks like really complicated and kind of interesting, but it was so easy to make. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to make one of these on Tinkercad. The, the beauty of it is that Tinkercad has a kind of, um, they have a kind of share and share alike policy. So if somebody else makes a model, you can take it and then manipulate it and use it for your own means. So to make this, all I basically did was find a dodecahedron that someone made, copied it three times and made one smaller than the other, smaller than the other, and um, printed it. Very, very easy. This is my latest, um, my latest creation. I, I'm quite proud of this. Um, although obviously it's it's nothing compared to some of the things that some real professionals are doing, but the fact that I was able to make this in about 20 minutes with very little experience kind of made me feel happy. Okay, so I would like to show you one of the simplest ways to make 3D models. And um, I mean, it's just so easy compared to like approaches like CAD or using computer programming languages, which are good if you want to do certain things. But this thing I want to show you called Tinkercad is just fantastic because like a 10 year old can use it. It's so simple, but it's extremely powerful as well. So let me show you how it goes. Um, you know paint? in Windows. Um, paint is like a really easy to use drawing package. So I'd say Tinkercad is kind of the same thing, but for 3D instead of 2D. So um, unlike paint, Tinkercad is entirely online. So all you have to do is just to go to tinkercad.com and um, here we are. I already have an account, but it's all free. So um, don't have to pay anything to use it at all, which is nice. So here we are. And so I want to show you how to make some things with some moving parts. So um, you just click create new design and it's just a drag and drop interface. So it's really very easy to use. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can make a little car or something. Um, so we start with a cube, let's uh, stretch it out a little bit, get a bit higher maybe, and then we want some um, places where we can put some spokes for some wheels in, so we'll just add some holes, so some cylindrical hole, um, we'll turn it round, I mean I'm just doing all this work using the mouse, it's very very intuitive, we lift up this hole a little bit, Actually, I've, let me uh, do this differently. So we'll drop the hole down, then we'll make it longer. Now we shall rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay. Um, so if we drop it down a bit, we want to be going right through the middle of this, of this thing. So there we are. That's ready for one spoke. And then we can just copy it. So I think uh, edit copy, edit paste, and then we've got another copy. And we can just shift that along like so. So there we are. Now all we need is our actual wheels. So again, we could just use cylinders. Um, pretty easy stuff. So if we rotate this, now no, let's make it higher first, make it very nice and high, like this. Now I'll make it a bit thinner and um, rotate it around this way, 90 degrees. And then we want some big, okay, so let's just copy this. And we want some big, um, some big fat wheels. So actually no, we delete this, make another cylinder. 
we'll make this one really really big like this and it doesn't have to be so tall again we can just rotate this by 90 degrees and um, now here's a cool trick if we copy this and put it over here we can use this great function called a line so if we just get just get things roughly roughly in the right way and now we just hold shift and click on everything and click adjust and align and we can just line all this stuff up so um, line up the middles line it all up like that and now we've got this nice sort of done battle shape I hope it's I hope it's um, it's not quite wide enough okay let's just make this a bit thinner So it's a slightly funny looking car, but there you go. And we'll make it a bit, well, let's just shrink it in general. Okay, I made a mistake there. So there's another great function, which is group. So if you group some things together, then that keeps it all coherent and you can, you can uh, mess around with it all at once. Group. Ah, what happened? Okay, and then um, make it a bit smaller. So we also want to group this together. So we'll click on these three. One, two, three, and group those. And now we just want to make this go through these holes. So actually, if we elongate this a bit, and then shrink it down a bit. And this is a pretty hashed together way of doing it. I'm, I'm just trying to show you a fast way to make something with moving parts. Okay, so we're in business now. All we have to do is lift this up and make sure it goes through that hole. And there we are. We've got our wheel. And then we can just copy it. And we have a car of sorts. This is the next big thing. Everyone's going to be driving one of these next year. Um, so there we are so I mean that's like five minutes to make a thing with um, fully uh, moving parts and um, well okay maybe I should make these wheels bigger etc but I'm sure you get the idea and then if you want to like get this you can just click download for 3d printing and download an SDL file and then you can just put that in your 3d printer and go ahead or you can um, you can order it so you can just um, order this 3d print and you know pay a few dollars and it'll arrive at your home so one of the coolest functions of this Tinkercad is that there's all these built-in shapes that other people have designed and you can just grab them and use them so if you want to make some really interesting things with moving parts these gears are absolutely brilliant so make a couple of these gears so we can make some holes inside these gears uh, so we can actually use them that's always a good thing and so um, if we just shrink these down a bit and get them lined up properly actually we can use this align function here just align middle okay a bit smaller and again just line
and um, if we just have a look make sure that the uh, hole goes right through the bottom whoops so if we just lower this hole down a bit oh dear. line it up And there we have it, our gear. So if we group these together, then here we go, we've got our gear all ready to go. And then of course, once you've got this, you can make a whole enormous number of different machines. Um, so maybe I'll just make something quickly. A nice way for actually 3D printing if you're going to make these kind of gears is to use cones I find so um, the good thing about a cone is that the contact which a gear will make if you put a gear on top of a cone is it won't make much contact with it and so it's fairly easy to just sort of um, break off the um, break off the contact points once you've actually printed the thing because um, you always have to think about this when you're printing stuff is going to stick together due to gravity and things and so you've got to think about how you can actually sort of free it after it's been printed so I mean one thing you can do is just something like this let's uh, well, line it up And we can lift it up a bit like that and uh, you can see that that's that can be fairly easily captive so I mean if you want to do it properly for example you can get another cone spin it around and um, again well no let's let's just do it in a slipshod way can raise that up a bit or a lot well let's try and align everything up and there we have it that should spin round uh, provided these cones aren't too big or whatever uh, so you get the basic idea um, and obviously if you combine lots of these together um, you can make all kinds of machinery and it's just like so easy to do so um, this is another great way of uh, making things with movable parts and of course once you've made this you can just um, you can just copy it And you can make sure that the next one's in the proper place so that the cogs are going to turn and um, you know make all kinds of machines this way and there's also lots of other mechanical things that you can just drop in for example corkscrew um, various different kinds of gears I mean, all of these things are really useful if you want to make some proper machines. I mean, there are limitations to what you can actually print, but they're, they're sort of diminishing, especially as printers are getting better and better. But just to be able to drop all of these mechanical devices in and use them and copy them, it makes designing like real machines so much easier. Think, think about something like a ship in a bottle. It's very difficult to make using the old style methods. But with 3D printing, it's a piece of cake because you just um, lay down all the material from the bottom up. And um, also, there's some ridiculously easy ways to make things like this in Tinkercad. I mean, it's almost like cheating, really. Um, what you do... So, I want to make um, some dodecahedron inside a dodecahedron. So, it's very easy. 
Um, because Tinkercad has this great policy um, when it works. It has this great policy which is like share and share alike, which means that a lot of people will share their designs and you can just go ahead and sort of take those designs and um, use them for your own means. So if we just search dodecahedron, which is a very interesting mathematical shape, we find these different designs of dodecahedra which people have already made. So let's just grab this one. And we just click copy and tinker. And now here we go. This is um, this is our thing now. We can play with it. So um, I also pay homage to the designer. So let's just go back. So this was designed by um, G S H Raga. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to copy this and tinker it. And this is because of the kind of license which is involved in Tinkercad that. Um, you're sort of legally allowed to do this so we can now take this and um, we can just mess around with it as much as we want so what I like to do is just uh, copy it there's another copy whoops and uh, hold shrink it down so hold shift and draw it in like this and then we can just um, you just drop it in the middle in fact, we can do it a bit more intelligently using this line um, function. So there we have it. I think um, that's captive. I don't think that small tetrahedron can get out. And um, I mean, we can do it again just just for fun. We can copy this again. Um, make this bigger this time, let's say. And once again, we can just highlight all three of these things and adjust, align. Um, so we want to align it this way. Ah, alas, let's do it again. Okay, highlight everything, adjust, align. There we go. And there we go. And there we have it. And we could just download this straight away. Uh, and print it. It's really that easy. That's that's how I made the model I showed before. 